Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in IBM Power Systems in the UK. This video is about the new Harvard Management Console, HMC, based on the Power 9 processor. It's called a 7063CR2. Most technical people will call it the HMC CR2. You know, the one that's based on the Power 9 processor. And this video is a first look. Lots of pictures, and I'm sorry if English isn't your first language. I will be going quite quickly to keep the video short. It was announced the 13th of April, as a week ago. We actually had the machine two weeks before that, so I'm pretty sure that it will look the same hardware engineering side. Uh, there may be some labels missing on the outside of the box and things like that. I hope you don't mind. It's better to have a video now than one in six months' time to get the last little details right. It will be available, GA as we call it, on the 21st of May for the first 50 or so countries. Here's the picture of the box as it appeared in our computer room. The mailroom people uh, bring it round for us. Uh, the box on the left is, uh, I think it's an IBM storage system, the, the fancy new V5200. Unfortunately, that's not for me. This was for out-of-the-box experience testing, feedback to the development labs so they understand that it'll actually uh, be okay once we go GA for the official release. Not very exciting, we've got the usual straps, we've got a, we've got a pallet, a small lightweight pallet underneath, and we have a label there with the various components. I'll go through the components and the options you have with buying the HMC at the end. Here it is without the straps, looking very nice actually. The quality of the cardboard was impressive even. Uh, very, very strong cardboard. Inside the box we have a tray with bits and pieces in here, mains leads as we'd expect, uh, the right ones for the UK. Then some bits and pieces here. Uh, we're not quite sure why we ship these. The parts list is uh, useful. What on the CD I didn't even look um, I haven't actually got a CD for my laptop anymore but uh, I think these are legal requirements at the top there's a long thick cardboard box in that is the uh, rack rails if we take that top tray out things are already looking nicely designed we have a nicely organized foam barrier to keep the server safe if we lift that out we can see the server it's in a polythene bag to keep out uh, moisture you have to break the label it's one of those ones that breaks as you uh, peel it off it's one u in height so this is a simple one person lift onto the table and here we go at the right hand end that's the back of the server so we have uh, handles and the uh, all the places that you plug things in so that's all protected a quick picture around the front sort of nice and clean a minimum look if we zoom in here you can see a bit more in the middle there we can see a um, set of five uh, little fans and there's two little discs if we zoom in further then on the left hand side we can see two discs little cover plate there's nothing behind the cover plate that you need access to at the bottom we can see five little fans there's two usb connectors they are optional some paranoid computer rooms don't allow or don't like usb connectors because people can steal data on the front of the computers then we have uh, five little leds and a white button which is used to start up the machine the mtm and serial number typical of this manufacturer that we use to create these machines when you press the white button, press it firmly once and then let go. And it does take a while before the machine starts. It's long enough that you start worrying, hang on, did I press that enough? But uh, it will start up, give it a good minute. Now we like to lift the lid, uh, have a look around inside the machine so we know what's in there before we put it into the rack. And we couldn't find an obvious way of getting the lid off. You can see there's a row of these tiny screws and there's a row going across the middle of them and there's some more screws down the sides, but no obvious catch to release the lid. So we're a little bit there scratching our head, uh, wondering uh, what to do next. I don't really want to undo 24 little screws. It turns out you don't need access to the inside of the chassis that's because all the units that you would want to remove go out the front and the back so please don't go removing those little screws now we talked to the engineering guys saying that there is a description on how to get the lid off if you really need that there's no um, active components uh, inside the machine 
so it's going to be fairly rare and unless you know a cable breaks or something inside there so what do you do to get these things out well this is round the back again we have these two knurled uh, screw handles there's a phillips there if you if they're too hard to undo by hand um, then they have these little tabs that you pull around they pull forward and then round to the the sides and that actually pulls out the uh, planer which includes most of the electronics inside the server. So here's the planer out in here. Uh, very clean technology. It just pulls straight out. No hard work to do. So I took in a close-up picture of the null knobs and the little handles, just in case you haven't got a good uh, view for that. So here's a look at the thing from the side. This is the left. And we can identify a whole load of components in here. I labeled them up. In blue, we can see the heat sink. Um, it's a very low height heat sink because it's only one year, of course. Then in red, we can see the four dim slot going around the same way, sort of anti-clockwise. At the back on the left, we have the power, disk, USB, LED uh, connectors, and going out to the button on the front. We have a classic CR2032 battery in here. This is there to keep the uh, the time of day clock running for when it's not uh, powered up and connected to electricity a, a nice common battery we can always find some of those if um, in a couple of years time it uh, goes flat then we have uh, an optional card in here with the silver heat sinks that's uh, not normally supplied it's optional if you want 10 gigabit uh, ethernet these are rj45 connections that is plugged into the uh, riser in the middle in here which is a pcie uh, socket then if we look in the yellow this is actually the uh, bmc cpu i think it's an amd chip this is the service processor here's another picture looking from the right hand side a couple of things in here you can see the blue circle things there these are handles for you to pick up the planer and to avoid any static electricity problems Along the front edge, we can see there's a silver edge. Uh, this is actually a plate that goes underneath the entire machine and comes up the other side. This gives us a backing to that. This is useful so that when you're sliding it in and out of the chassis, we're not going to short it out. I like to say it's reassuringly heavy. It feels like a well-engineered, solid piece of uh, engineering. Underneath the heat sink, there's only one Power9 uh, CPU. These are the two halves with a bracket around it to make sure it's pressing down to get a good thermal contact. Okay, around the back, we have the two power 900 watt uh, power supplies. They are redundant, so if one fails, you can swap it out and put it uh, a new one in uh, with the HMC running, which is uh, good news. We took them out to have a quick look at them. In there, you can see their 80 plus platinum standard, um, usual connectors with a, a lot of copper. In the bottom right, you can see a big copper connection there to supply the electricity in and out of the unit. In the middle then we have, at the front, we have the fans. They have a nice little ring handle that you pull out after taking the front plate cover off by, again, lifting the little, two little handles. And we just took a couple of pictures to give you the idea. They slide in very easily without any problems. On the left-hand side at the front then, we took a look at some of the discs, press the blue triangle, handle pops out, slides out. It's actually uh, pretty solid inside a, a metal container. They are SAS discs and Enterprise discs, so they are nice and fast and reliable. There's always two discs, same size. They're running RAID 1, which is mirrored. These can be hot replaced if we have a disc failure because we can pull them in and out of the front of the machine. Now a quick look at installing the rails and the HMC. They're pretty simple and it's pretty quick to do. Get them out of the packaging. Then you'll find the top and bottom we actually have rack rails. In the middle and here we have two brackets that attach to the HMC itself and a plastic bag with nuts and bolts. You will notice that you need a torque screwdriver. I think it's a 20 and maybe a 16 as well. And then they've got the regular rack bolts. In the package you have the bracket clips to put the bolts into for both the round hole racks and the square hole rack. So get the right set out. The two little blue arrows in here is showing you this is the square hold one, the clip that slides in the side uh, is for the round hole racks. There's also four of these torque bolts to put the brackets on the HMC. So take the brackets, one for each side of the HMC. Uh, this bracket goes at the front. We align these uh, nail heads with the holes in the bracket. We'll get all three aligned up and push it backwards. Then we get these holes, the bolt threads lined up and we put in the little bolts. 
in the rack here we have uh, a 1U, find a suitable 1U slot and we have uh, two bolts in here. The one in the middle here is for a bolt that actually locks the HMC into the rack. Notice there's two little adjustable torque bolts in here which allows us to change the size of the rails. So this is the adjustable ones, there's uh, fixed ones that you can put into, for example, a T42. Note here, make sure you don't get these upside down, that the bracket on the HMC will slide into this U-shaped. It needs to be at the bottom. Same for the other rail. We're now at the back looking at the same rail. You may find you need to take out one of these little torque bolts and move it to a different position so that it doesn't snag the end of the rail as you're adjusting it. Little reminder in here then on the HMC, it has the brackets that have the little flanges like this, and then the rails have the U shape at the bottom like this, and they match up as you slide in the HMC. It is uh, metal to metal, these aren't uh, roller bearings in here for smoothness. That's reserved for much, much heavier Power 9 machines. So here we are putting it in, matching up the bracket with the rail and sliding it in until we get the bracket up against the edge of the rack. We then put in the two further uh, bolts to lock the HMC in the machine. Here we can actually see that this is a hex bolt in here. Uh, the ones actually going to be shipped are going to have a Phillips uh, access at the front so you can undo it with a screwdriver as an alternative. That's fairly standard for Power 9 machines. So let's cable it up so we can power up the HMC. Little reminder looking around the back, two power supplies, of course we have two main cores to plug in here. The Velcro around in here is to strap around the power cord so that it doesn't get pulled out accidentally, particularly if they're coming from the bottom where the weight is uh, on them. Then we have the optional Ethernet adapter up in the top in here for 10 gigabit. We're not using that in this case. We have a USB connections here for your mouse and keyboard and a VGA connector as well. The rest along here are the Ethernet ports. I took this picture looking down at the labelling at the back of the HMC. We can see the four regular one gigabit Ethernet ports in here, a special one in here, and we have the VGA, the graphics screen connector. We did have a bit of a laugh about that. Um, it's got a picture of what it looks like one centimetre away from it. I think this is deliberate humour. On the Ethernet side, this one with M in here is for the management port that talks directly to the BMC service processor uh, used for starting up the machine and probably trying to get it onto the network. Then these are four other ports in here. This one is both a regular, if you like, Ethernet port and a BMC Ethernet port. We find that some customers don't have enough connections for networking at the top of the rack and so they only have one cable per machine but we need two different networks connected to it so this port can actually be used to do that. I think it looks at the IP address to work out whether to send the packets to the BMC or to the main processor, the HMC code. Now this is the results of the hardware review and the installation. We don't usually show you this, but this is an exceptional machine. This is the only machine I've actually seen that I'm happy to give it 100%. We always find some needly little faults that have to go back and get fixed. And we've actually done a quick uh, performance test later on once we had it running. It's very difficult to test for performance the speed of a graphical user interface. I mean, it feels to be quite snappy, but one thing that we tested though was we can use the uh, HMC REST API to get all the performance stats for all our servers. Typically in older machines, that could take two minutes to get all that data off. With uh, the CR1, it, it's come down drastically to maybe 20 seconds. On this machine, it's coming down to like half the length of time, so running at twice the performance. This is returning 150,000 statistics about the servers and LPARs. Just an initial impression is very good. So full marks and well done to the whole team that put this together. Now I did promise you at the start that we'll look at the specifications for the HMC. You'll find these in the announcement letter for America. Here's the link, I'll put that in the YouTube description so you can click on it and go find it. Although it doesn't have much more details than I've got here, I've actually put it out in English. Okay, so this product is called the IBM Power Systems HMC. It's got a short form IBM Power HMC and I think that is the logo that will actually appear 
on the machine in on the top right. Apparently you have to have legal approval to name products just to make sure we don't clash with somebody else and we all go to court. So 19 inch rack, 1U, that's pretty obvious. Power 9 with 6 cores, that's quite good. There's two options for the memory, 64 gig or 128. Nothing else is uh, allowed. Uh, and in both cases, that'll be occupying four dim slots so we get the maximum bandwidth. Uh, two uh, disks, 1.8 terabytes. They'll be automatically put into a RAID 1 or mirrored set uh, for you by the software. As we've seen on the back of the machine, there's four one gigabit ethernets and one dedicated for what it says IPMI. That's the one with an M on it for management of the actual device as the service processor level. There's an option for that 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. We saw that in the back of our machine. Uh, that's a two port adapter. That's an RJ45. If you want optical, do contact IBM. We want to know if people really want that. There's four USBs, two at the back, two at the front. There's an option not to have the ones at the front. This is a customer setup and install, and it's very simple to do the install. We're hoping to have another video which looks through the software installation, gives some hints and tips there. I've got one slide coming up with the one thing you need to know before you get the software going. Reliability, availability, and serviceability, RAS side of things. We can hot swap the disks, the power supplies, and the fans. The code level at the top right there, that runs the power 7, 8, and 9 servers. If you have power of 4, 5, 6, then you'll have to keep it an older HMC to control those and a newer HMC to control the new ones. Of course, later in the year 2021, now, um, we're moving up to power 10, and the HMC can only control three generations of power servers. So if you've got power 7, then keep your current older HMCs to manage that. And then when you get your Power 10 computers, they really deserve a CR2. The numbers of servers that the HMC will connect to remains unchanged. But of course, with a faster HMC, then we can do extra things like people can pull the performance stats of the machine itself, the hypervisor, the VIO servers, and some information about the LPOS using the REST API. And I have a little project called in extract plus that does that for you and puts the data into a time series database that's another video and they're already out there here's that little tip or hint i've promised you when you first want to log into the bmc this is the service processor it allows you to log in and you log in with root and the open bmc with upper and lowercase like this if you don't know that it's in the documentation but you're completely blocked at that point until you find it another little tip is it'll ask you to change the password we found it didn't like the word root in the password it just says no it doesn't really explain that now you know hopefully save you some time there we go then we're done for this video here's the ibm power hmc cr2 lovely bit of kit get yourself one well get yourself two actually it's best to have two hmc's don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or learned something don't forget to join the channel if you want to be told when my next video is out and available